Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we will discuss a few different options on how to track stage changes on an opportunity in Salesforce. The first way is to add a standard stage history related list to your layout. Uh, this comes standard with your Salesforce org and shows you a few different fields here from the record. Once the stage changes, it takes a snapshot and shows you some, some details. The issue here is these fields are not customizable, so if you use a different amount field, you wouldn't be able to track that here. The next option is to enable field history on your object. To do so, go from the object manager to field and relationships. Click set history tracking on the top right. Select this is true, and then I'll select the stage field. Here I can add any other fields I wanted as well, so I'll add amount, next steps, as well as close date, and then click save. I will then add this to my page layout. To do so, go to page layouts, opportunity layout, and select related list. I can see the related list called opportunity field history, and I'll go ahead and add this here, and click save. Click yes. Now let's go back to my record and scroll down. I can see this new section called Opportunity Field History. I can click view all to see the entire field history. And I can see each individual change. The close date was changed, the original value, and the new value. As well as the stage went from closed one to seven, and then from seven back to one. These first two options are great if you are on the record and you want a quick view of its history, but there's an issue. What happens if you're looking at tens of thousands of records and needing to analyze time to close or the average amount of time an opportunity stays in a particular stage? For this, we need to build a custom solution. And with flows, it's pretty simple. First, we'll need to create some fields to track this data. I'll start by creating a date field to store when the opportunity first moves into stage zero. I'll go to the top right of the object and click new. Select a date field type and then click next. I'll name this field to zero date. Populate the field API name. Click next again. Make sure that the appropriate profiles have access to this field. Click next, then click save to add it to the layout. I'll go ahead and continue this process, adding a new field for each option on our stage pick list value. Next, we'll create a new field that will show us how long the opportunity has been in a certain stage. We'll start by clicking new select the formula field. I'm naming this as S0 days in stage. A number will be the output and our decimal place will be zero. Then click next. This formula here is pretty simple. Let's click insert field and select our S1 date. Type minus and then add our S0 date. Next, click check syntax. Looks like everything is working, so I'll click next. Verify the profiles and click next. And then click save. Now, I'm going to test to make sure the formula works before I add a new field for every stage. After I scroll down the page to my new fields, I'll add in a zero date. Let's populate this with February 1st. And for the S1 date, I'll go ahead and say is the eighth, then click save. We can then see here that the S0 days and stage field changed to seven. If I then go ahead and adjust this to the ninth, the formula field will adjust to eight. I'd say the formula is working just fine. Now I'll go ahead and create more fields for each of our stages. Once all of these fields have been created, 
let's go ahead and adjust our page layout accordingly. From the Page Layout tab, click into the Opportunity Layout. Let's add a new section here. We'll call it Stage History. Leave it as a two column and then click OK. Let's then drag all of the stage fields down into this new section. Same with the days and fields, I'll put these on the right side. Then save. One thing I will go back and do really quick is default my S0 date. Since all of my opportunities will be created in S0, I can default my created date as my S0 date. From the field, I'll click Edit. And then from the default value, click here to show the editor. Type out the word today and then followed by a pair of open and close parentheses. Check the syntax and then click Save. So now that all of our fields have been created, it's time for the fun part, creating the flow. Navigate to the home page, then type in flow, then click flow. New flow. The type of flow we will be creating today is called a record triggered flow. Select it and click create. Our object is of course the opportunity. This will be triggered anytime a record is updated and I'll add one conditional requirement, so I'll select and here. Search for and select stage name. Change the operator to new, then select true as the value. Select fast updates here. This means that anytime the stage is changed, it will look at this flow. Then click done. Since we have already accounted for the S0, the first field we'll need to populate here is the S1 date. I'll click plus to add an element and then select decision. I'll label it S1 date. Type out S1 date is null here. Select record. And then stage name equals stage one and then add condition. Select record, then find the S1 date. For the operator, select is null. Then select true for the value option. This now takes into consideration if the stage changes into stage one and the S1 date field is null. But what happens if your reps jump stage from stage zero to stage two? Let's adjust this to account for that. I'll need to go in here and add each stage value as a record, and then I'll adjust my condition requirements to a formula. So now that every stage has been added here, we'll need to adjust our conditional requirements from AND to custom condition, logic is met. The formula will look at any time the stage equals one of the below options as well as the S1 date is nulled. To do so, I'll keep one and then add a bracket around the rest and change the ANDs to ORs. And click done. From here, let's create a new element on the true side. Select update triggering record and give it a name. From here, let's create a new element on the true side. Select update triggering record and give it a name. From the fields, I'll find my S1 date and select it. From the value, I'll create a new resource to reference today's date. I selected formula as the type and I'll name it today. For data type, select date. The formula is the same as we used earlier for the default value. Type out today, then add an open and close parenthesis. Check the syntax and then click done. Everything here looks good, so click done one more time. So now that the base of our flow is built out, we will now just need to go into each component, copy it, and then adjust it for each stage. That's been completed, so let's now save our flow and test if everything is working before building out the rest. I'll give it a name here starting with the object name and then the process. Click save and then activate the flow. For my test opportunity, I can see this stage is in zero and my S0 date is populated. 
My S1 and S2 dates are not, so if I go here and change my stage from 0 to 1, and as I expected, the S1 date is now populated to today. If I adjusted to stage 2 and click save, the S2 date populates as well. So it looks like my flow is working as expected. I can now go back here to my flow and replicate each node all the way down to close one. Once I do that, be sure to save and activate the new version of the flow and all of your stage transition dates will now be automated. We can now leverage this data in a report. So from an opportunity report, you can see that I added the field for S one days. In stage, you can see the total and by group, you can add the average here. This makes it simple to identify outliers from your average and associate them by any data point such as geo, AVP or source. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and consider subscribing as well as checking out some other videos on the channel. Thank you.